Hi friends, today I am going to discuss about what statistical inference is. Statistical inference is the process of making conclusions, valid conclusions about the parameters of the population. And we have two divisions of statistical inference. That is the theory of estimation and testing of hypothesis. In theory of estimation, we estimate the parameters which is expected to be unknown, but the probability low is assumed to be known. And in testing of hypothesis, we take a decision. It is a decision making problem. It is a rule for deciding whether to accept or to reject the hypothesis based on the sample drawn from a particular population. Now we are going to discuss about the first section of statistical inference that is a theory of estimation and it is expounded by Professor R.A. Fisher and in theory of estimation it is divided into two categories that is the point estimation and the interval estimation and in point estimation we estimate the parameter and the estimate will be a single value and in interval estimation uh, we, give, we, we will get an interval where the parameter is expected to fall with a certain degree of confidence. Now what is an estimator? An estimator it is a random variable it is a function of the random observation and the estimator is a random variable itself and estimate is the value produced by the estimator so when we consider an estimator it should have some properties and the desirable properties of a good estimator are unbiasedness consistency efficiency and sufficiency only if an estimator has these four property we can say that the estimator is a good estimator so let us first talk about the unbiasedness property unbiasedness property says that suppose we have a statistic a statistic which is a function of the sample values a statistic is said to be unbiased for a particular parameter theta if it comes from a uh, PD, if it has a PDF f of, f of x theta only if it satisfies this property that is expectation of Tn is equal to theta for all values of n we say that Tn which is a statistic is an unbiased estimator of the parameter theta that means the expected value of the statistic should be equal to the unknown parameter theta now let us consider an example for unbiasedness consider a random sample of observations of size n from a normal population with mean mu and variance sigma square we can show that x bar that is mean is an unbiased sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean mu for that we have to find the mean of x bar so we already know the function pdf of the normal distribution and the pdf of normal distribution is f of x is equal to 1 by sigma root 2 pi e raised to minus 1 by 2 x minus mu by sigma the whole square where x lies between minus infinity and plus infinity mu lies between minus infinity and plus infinity and the standard deviation sigma is always greater than zero it is a positive quantity now as we already know the expectation of a random uh, normal random variable is mu and the variance of a normal random variable is sigma square now consider the expectation of the sample mean that is x bar then we expand the sample mean expect as expectation of 1 by n into summation i from 1 to n xi by the property of expectation and we can write 
uh, this equation as 1 by n into summation i from 1 to n expectation of xi we are taking this summation outside because the we are taking the random samples and the random samples are always independent then 1 by n into since the samples are independent summation i from 1 to n will become n because the mean of the normal variable is mu so when we sum these expectations from 1 to n we will get n times mu so we cancel this n and we will get mu so the expectation of x bar is equal to mu since the expectation of x bar is equal to mu x bar can be taken as an unbiased estimator of the population mean mu now we are going to the sec second property of uh, a, a good estimator that is consistency suppose we are taking a random sample of observations of x1 x2 etc xn from a pop, uh, from a population with pdf f of x theta we have to find the parameter theta and we consider tn as the statistic and tn is taken as the function of sample observation tn is equal to t of x1 x2 x etc xn and it is said to be consistent only if tn converges to probability that is and the definition is for every epsilon greater than 0 limit n tends to infinity probability of modulus tn minus theta greater than or equal to epsilon is equal to theta that means the difference between the sample uh, the statistic and the parameter is reducing and it converges to zero it will become the tn will become theta and the consistency is a large sample property now we have we have an important theorem that is an estimator tn is such that expectation of tn is equal to theta and variance of tn is equal to converges to uh, zero as n tends to infinity this is a sufficient condition for finding a consistent estimator suppose we are given we are asking to find an estimator we can use these we can uh, consistent estimator we can use these two conditions we have to find the mean of the estimator and also we have to show that the variance of the estimator tends to zero as n tends to infinity the proof of the above theorem is based on the Trebuchet's inequality then uh, Trebuchet's inequality says that for any epsilon greater than zero probability of mod tn minus theta n less than the epsilon greater than 1 minus variance of tn divided by epsilon square now we are considering this particular quantity that is modulus tn minus theta and we can write it as modulus tn minus theta plus theta minus theta n we are adding a subtra and subtracting a particular quantity theta which is greater than modulus tn minus theta minus modulus theta n minus theta we are just rearranging these two quantity and now we are applying probability to this particular quantity probability of modulus tn minus theta minus modulus t, uh, theta n minus theta less than epsilon is greater than 1 minus variance of tn divided by epsilon square this can be this can be written as probability of modulus tn minus theta which is less than epsilon plus mod tn minus theta greater than 1 minus variance of tn by epsilon square this is possible since tn tends to theta and hence theta modulus theta n minus theta is less than epsilon and the variance of tn tends to zero hence variance of tn divided by epsilon square is less than delta delta is a small positive quantity and also epsilon and epsilon epsilon 1 and delta are arbitrarily small numbers we are replacing this particular quantity which is a very small quantity by epsilon 1 
So, this particular equation will become probability of modulus Tn minus theta less than epsilon plus epsilon 1 which is greater than 1 minus delta for every epsilon for every n greater than n naught. Hence, Tn is a consistent estimator of theta n. Now, we are moving to the example. We are considering a random sample from a normal distribution. Again, we are doing the same uh, based on the unbiasedness. X follows a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square. We can prove that X bar, which is the sample mean, is a consistent estimator of the population mean mu. So, population mean uh, and we already know that know the PDF of a normal distribution. It is given that x follows n mu sigma square where mu is the mean of the normal distribution and sigma square is the variance of the normal distribution. Since we have a normal population with mean mu and variance of x, uh, variance sigma square. Uh, we can write it as expectation of x is equal to mu and variance of x is equal to sigma square. Now, the sufficient condition for a per, uh, statistic to be consistent is expectation of x bar is equal to mu that means the parameter and variance of x bar should tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, we can find the mean and variance of the statistic that is expectation of x bar is equal to expectation of 1 by n into summation xi we can take 1 by n and summation outside since it is a random sample so 1 by n into summation i from on to n expectation of xi is equal to 1 by n into n times mu so the n and n stands cancelled and the result will be mu therefore expectation of x bar is equal to mu now coming to the variance we have variance of x bar is equal to variance of 1 by n summation xi and using the property of variance we can take 1 by n outside that is if variance of ax is taken variance of a uh, if ax is the random variable then variance of ax is equal to a square into variance of x by that property we can write 1 by n square into variance of summation i from 1 to n xi since it is a random sample summation i from 1 to n can also be taken outside so the result will be 1 by n square summation i from 1 to n variance of xi that is equal to 1 by n square into n times sigma square the sigma square is the variance of x as we already know so the result will be sigma square by n now we can see that here is a n in the denominator as n tends to infinity sigma square by n will tend to 0 which is a second condition for consistency. So, here variance of x bar tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. So, the two conditions for a function for a parameter to be consistent uh, is for a uh, statistic to be consistent is satisfied here. So, the statistic x bar is a consistent estimator of the parameter mu.